Welcome back to this Robin Mind special. I remember the government did say, I think it was when the, the African office for Twitter was opened in Ghana. Yeah. And there was all this uproar from Nigerians. And the government did say something along the lines of, it's young people's fault. How we project Nigeria's image online, that you can't keep bashing Nigeria and expect foreign investors to be attracted to a country like this, you know. Do you think young people have any responsibility in the state Nigeria is in right now? Like, have, what sort of a role do you think your people play? Is government right in criticizing young people or people who are active on social media or people who sort of, like they say, don't speak well of the country? Are they responsible for where we are? Um, <clears throat> I feel like um, <laughs> the government hasn't really done so much at trying to negotiate with the people. Um, instead, they've tried to detect what should and what shouldn't be. And then um, the place of Twitter opening the headquarters in Ghana, Jack Dosey was actually in Nigeria first. But, I mean, with the set of wrong signals Nigeria keep um, putting out in the public, I mean, who would feel safe to want to run a big establishment in a country like Nigeria where every day people are crying about insecurity and it, it just seems like the government isn't listening. I mean, people do no longer feel safe traveling through roads. Everybody wants to um, travel through flight because of how, how huge or how big insecurity is um, in a country like Nigeria. Trying to blame the youth, that's, that's wrong because, I mean, like Runu said, we're trying to be actively involved. What we get is threat from the government. We, we try to be actively involved. We try to go out to um, peacefully protest. And what are we faced with? We're faced with intimidation. We're faced with police officers harassing armless protesters. And up until now, there's still some, protester, uh, some protesters in, in custody that hasn't even faced trials since October last year. So blaming it on, on young Nigerians, that is, that is totally wrong and, and not true because we... we we as young Nigerians were really trying our best in getting actively involved and the government hasn't really tried in giving us a chance to do have a say yeah. in what goes on in the country. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, DJ Switch, something I know a couple of people have touched on here is how, you know, I think in a, in, to put it very plainly, is not, government is not one person, basically. You know, as much as we know who the president is and who, where the box stops, I think it was Aisha who talked about the National Assembly and members there who should also be held accountable. You know, but we've also seen the National Assembly, I think it was a few days ago, a resolution was passed sort of still upholding the ban on Twitter, uh, saying that you know, they sort of agree with government. I think uh, the Minister of Information was there to defend the government's position. And of course, the suspension is still in place. You know, this talk about holding um, government officials accountable, a lot of people don't know what that means. Do I just call up my, my House of Rights member and say, what are, why are you not doing this for me? You know, we've seen a few attempts at recalling National Assembly members that haven't really gone according to plan, you know, which is why I still go back to the point of young people just feeling like, you know, this, this thing, what's the point to all of this, you know? How do we, this talk about accountable, how do we hold government accountable? First of all, we're talking about asinine barbaric imitators, right? who are dinosaurs, as far as I'm concerned. Since I was born, I've literally seen these people since I was born. You're talking about people who had a way of thinking back then. How do you expect them to understand what we're trying to talk about right now? How do you expect these people to move us forward when they are still back then? We need to keep, we just need to keep, we need to keep using whatever platforms that we have to continue to speak up and this, this concept of you know how the, uh, you sit back and you listen to some of these people saying oh young people if you want to get things done go join a party i would not advise me and and mind you it's not every young person that has sense okay so let's just put that one on one side but i would not advise every young every you know any young person or anybody really to join any of these parties because these parties are corrupt at the core the minute you come in there with your good intentions, you have to take a knee. You have people who are backing these parties who will fund you, and then you you you, you lose your you lose your your morality. You you lose your bearing. And and I mean, look at the state of the country. Look at the power sector. And when I say power, I'm talking about electricity. There are people who benefit from the fact that we don't have light. 
It's, it's, it's as simple as that. There are people who make a killing. They make so much money from the fact that we, we don't have light. I mean, are we not capable of generating power if we could do that to support Ghana some years ago? What exactly is the problem? That's the accountability. I really, really feel is a trick question. But we just need to keep pushing and we need to keep making noise. That's the best we can do for now. And we need to mobilize as a people. Uh, sorry, Macaroni said, uh, you were talking about the, 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 the power and the energy of the NSAS as a movement. Yes, it was. It was it was quelled with such with such wickedness and heavy handedness, but we need to sort of bring that same energy back and take it to the polls. I know I did just say that it doesn't count, but at least that is a statement to be made. Whether they rig it or not, we need to make the statement. It's very, very important that we do that. Awesome. Thank you very much, DJ Switch. Renu now leading up from that, because We've heard a lot of talk about voting from Aisha, from you, from DJ Switch, you know, just political participation. But like DJ Switch has rightly said, a lot of people also feel like, what's the point? You know, I voted a few times. I've never felt like my vote counted. How is my one vote going to change anything? You know, there's a lot of talk about 2023 already. Um, there's people who are also very scared of, you know, elections now. Nowhere seems to be really safe. You know, how does this change, even though many people are not a fan of that word anymore, how does this change happen in 2023 with young people um, sort of taking charge or holding government to account by voting? How can we then do that if we feel like the political system is, for want of a better word, rigged against us? Thank you very much, Ibuka, for that question. Where do we go in 2023? I've listened to... Um DJ Switch, I've listened to Hi Shay Sufu, I've listened to um, Tacha, thank you. And, you know, for the past, I think it's been eight months now since the NSAS protest, I, I have gone through a lot of changes in my life. You talked about bank account freezing, you talked about, there's been a lot of things that has happened, a lot of incidences, not just to me, but to other people, to people like DJ Switch, Hi Shay Sufu, Tacha, a lot of other frontliners. And why am I saying this is because it, it brought me to um, a realization or it, it opened my eyes to what my country really is. When I started the other time, I said, all it has been for people like me growing up in the ghetto, in marginalized communities, you know, in Nigeria, it has always been about also the best you can. And Jack, you know, we're not really aware of what is going on around us. It has always been a guy. Also, because if you don't also, you're going to end up suffering or you're going to end up, you know, you're just going to end up badly. And my, for me, uh, that's there, yeah, I found the word and awakening to what the political structures around me, around other young people have been. I have metamorphosed from being a brand influencer to now talking to hundreds of people, talking to other of people daily because of my involvement in the NSAS uh, protest and the boss out there for young people like I said earlier is tiredness um, did you switch was talking about not disenfranchising some people I dare say that people are disenfranchised of it I'd say that when we ask people to vote because I've been thinking about it. Yeah, I used to say, you know, let's mobilize. I still think that voting counts, but now that citizens are being seen as enemies of the nation, people cannot complain. Um, we, 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 I, I asked the question, uh, one of the programs before that, what is left of our national structure as Nigerians that then we can go on to voting? What is left of our quality of life as citizens? What is left of our dignity and respect? As people of the world, you talk too much, they label you terrorists. Why the real terrorists are occupying political offices? We're talking about voting. Nigerians are el left helpless. Why insecurity is taking away our homes, taking away our violations? If you go out and come back home, you're safe. Some of some Nigerians close their eyes and open it in a pool of their own blood. Some of us are losing properties. The lucky ones, the lucky ones, the, the unlucky ones that go out never get to return. Like. Uh, Aisha Isufu will say, and I will tweet at times that yesterday's survivors are becoming today's victims. How do they vote tomorrow? Um, <clears throat> uh, Rinu, you made like a lot and a lot of sense. Um, but when you mentioned that you pray God helps us, at this point, I feel like God is tired because 
I mean, we've been calling on him. I, I grew up in a Christian home, so we've been calling on God. I know, like, one of the prayer points at um, every church service, we have to pray for our country, Nigeria. Um, one thing is we need to understand that the highest office ever is the office of the citizen, yeah? And um, the highest form of protest is protesting with our PVCs and actually voting and actually actively getting involved, going to get our PVCs and exercising our rights by voting. I mean, at this point, we would call on God as much as we want to call on God, but it would take Nigerians to liberate um, Nigeria. Thank you very much to all of you for doing so amazing. Good luck in everything you do. Keep speaking up. Uh, even though Aisha said it's nobody's work to speak up for anybody, but we appreciate the fact that you guys do. And uh, we thank you very much for being here today. Thank you very much. Let's dance now. It is my turn. Just one more